Hey y'all, long time no see. Hey Mallory. Hiya. Hi Skoos. Hi Becca. Leslie. Um, I dropped the chat the link in there if y'all want to join. How's everyone doing? Hi, cool gamer BC. Were you on Britney's, Mallory? I was listening, yes. Oh, okay. I was about to say, I didn't know if I saw you in the comments or not. Yeah, I was listening. I'm trying to clean something off my shower wall. I know, right, Leslie? It's been so long. Hi, Tina. Oh, my gosh. So good to see you, Kathy. I wonder if Brittany's coming on, isn't she? I would assume so for a little bit, probably. That's what I thought. I got to go get my kids in like an hour and 10 minutes. So it might not be that long of a live. So the... Uh the interview tomorrow is the same one of the one that I sent you before. Yes. <laughs> I'm so anxiously awaiting that. Yeah, it is interesting, especially with everything that they've set up to now. I'm interested to see how she plays everything off, too. Mm hmm. Hi, sweet and sleuthy, Lori. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm really curious to see what she has to say. Yeah, I am glad, though, that they said beforehand that they're not going to ask her the hard-hitting questions that everyone wants to ask, because then at least people are not necessarily expecting it. Right. But it'll be interesting to still hear her side of things. Yes, I agree. That's 8 p.m. Central, right? Uh, is it? Uh, I think so, because I think it's. Nine Eastern, which would be eight for me. What time zone are you in? Well, I'm in Minnesota. What's that in Eastern? Eastern, <laughs> you guys are one ahead of me, but I don't know where they're at. So um, like, when I hit my notify me on like the actual YouTube app, it says 9 p.m. for me. So I'm wondering if it's 9 p.m. here and then 10 p.m. Eastern. Huh. That feels like a really I mean, late time to do an interview. I know. I want to go look because she's Eastern. Amanda's in Eastern. Because that's going to be like, I think I'm five. Hey, hours ahead of you. All right, so it's going to be like oh, one o'clock in the morning for me. Oh, dang. Yep. Um, I can't. My I'm phone gonna go go I don't remember which one you put it in. I put it in. Uh, I don't know if I put it in a direct message or on your. It was on yours. Okay. I'll look right now because um, I have it on. Yeah, it was in mine. Okay. Oh, it says it, it's been removed. Ooh. Is that the old one? Yeah, it might be. Hang on. I'll do it. I was like, no. Okay. Uh, 8 p.m. my time. Okay. So that would be 9 yours. Okay. Says live in 31 hours. Countdown is on. Hi, City Girls. <laughs> Bam. Lord. Um, let me share the link to Brittany, even though it's in the chat. I'm just going to share it real quick. I was going to play. I'm really nervous about playing um, court TV section of Jeffrey speaking. Like um, for copyright? Yeah. I'm not sure how. That's why I have this fair use banner down here. <laughs> I was about to say, I think people were like, uh, they were they not... Um, Copy streaming the uh, um, oh my god, 
Like, like the I'm not going to play the whole thing. I'm just going to play his portions. You know? Well, as long as you stop it, what is it, every three minutes? Then you're under, and say, and chat about it, then I think you're under uh, fair use. Yeah, you have to, yeah. Sorry. Um, Leslie, Amanda is interviewing with, what's their name, Mallory? Uh, what is it? Crime on the Record, C-O-T-I yeah. podcast. Yeah, Crime on the Record. Her cousin's, uh, YouTube channel. Yes. I believe I posted it in both Brit's Discord and Mal's Discord. Okay. Post it again, um, tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. And then re yeah, and remind people because otherwise people forget it won't go over <laughs> like me. <Okay>. Yeah, <laughs> I will. Um. Uh, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something. I'm still trying to <laughs> my ADD self. I'm still trying to send the link to Brittany. <laughs> okay. Um, Lazi, you mean the link between the podcaster and Amanda, or who is she talking about? Um, oh, the fact that they're cousins. Oh. I think, yeah. Well, and in the last one, if you watch, like, their most recent video that they put up about her allegedly being exonerated and yeah but that all comes from amanda law enforcement hasn't right you know and i also find it weird how they're so against jeffrey at the same time like right he never talked to her like he blocked her that's why the text didn't go through and that's all allegedly based on what amanda's saying but it's still weird right i agree story of this case though amanda said yeah. it Amanda said it. Amanda said it. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. Right. Amanda one. told me. Literally from day one. Thank you all for being here, chat, by the way. And panel. I want to play this, but I want to give it a minute. And I'm waiting for to see if Brittany comes on or not. So if I, I might have to switch off. I don't have to leave until like three o'clock. So I think we'll be good. Okay. I mean, that's an hour. If not, then I'll just um, switch over to my phone because I'm just going to be sitting in the pickup line at school. But I wanted to talk about what he says, because I don't know if everyone has any has have all y'all heard what Jeffrey said to Cork TV? The original one, not the new one. If there's a new one, if that's what we're talking about. Yeah, this was from um, two days ago. Um, I thought it was from yesterday, but I guess it was from two days ago. I'm not quite sure. I'd have to, once I see the beginning of it, I'll tell you if I have or not. Okay. Hey, Carson. Hey. I definitely haven't. I've been dying of COVID. I haven't even been on my phone because the light and everything. <laughs> oh, I feel you. Yeah, Leslie, I agree. Hey, Miss Crucifix. Beautiful. Um, okay, so it looks like not a lot of people have seen it anyway. So I'll, if one of the mods that can drop a link um, to Court TV's channel, I would appreciate it because that's where I'm going to be getting this. So I would rather just drop their link. Um, I think Brittany saw it. I hope she did at least. Well, she knew you were coming on. So maybe she's trying to get stuff regulated before she jumps in. Lori, yes. Okay, well, 
Let me see if I should. Sorry, I was texting Britt. Yes, Scotty, you have a right to your opinion. And I've had I've heard other people say that Jeremy doesn't give them good vibes or whatever. Uh huh. I'm live. Thank you, BC. Yeah, and that would make sense if really he is not necessarily close with her in a way. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Oh, okay. She's coming. She said, "Hope everyone meets her over here." Okay. I just didn't want to play it without her and then her be lost if she hasn't seen it, you know? Yeah. Oh, my dog. Hold on. He's outside. He just barked. Come in. <laughs> Hold on. Let me, let me let him in real quick. Okay, sorry. You're good. All right. Well, I don't want to keep everybody waiting. I feel bad. <laughs> well, we can give her the rundown after the fact, too. Yeah, we'll give her the rundown. Let me... I'm not going to be able to see the chat for a minute, okay? This is surveillance. I had it pulled up right, right where I needed it to be. This is surveillance. On the part of the public when it seems if that to talk to the to me like she's assuming the daughter and her family holding up uh yes absolutely all right bobby stand by because uh joining us now by phone special guest in baltimore maryland uh debbie son jeffrey bearden is with us and jeffrey thank you so much for joining us tonight first of all uh, i'd like to express the deepest condolences from all of us here at court tv um how are you and your family holding up uh, yes, uh, Mr. Bahalatan, thank you so much for having uh, me on. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, so my family, um, I'm, I'm not going to lie, we're not doing great um, by any means. I think the last two months of our lives have been very surreal. Um, you know, we've had, we've been put in different circumstances, situations that we could have never imagined. We've been followed, we've been photographed, we've been drugged through the ringer online, um, critiqued for every action or inaction or anything in our history, speaking out or not speaking out. And, you know, I'm, I'm here today because, you know, I want people to know that I feel like my family is being stripped of some part of a chance to like grieve collectively and i think my family is really just here wanting to you know try to get answers for my mom and seek some kind of justice and you know try to keep the focus on her investigation um especially given everything that's just been going on recently absolutely you know i i've watched that video from the uh family dollar store and, you know, I'm down here in Georgia also, and I, it's a Saturday. She's dressed in all red. Um, 
Do you know where she was going that day? And is she a Georgia Bulldog fan? Was she going to watch the game or something? Do we have any idea? Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, my mom is definitely a, a Georgia Bulldog fan. Go dogs. Um, my mom was an even, even bigger Alabama fan, to be honest with you. Um, I think that day is something that even I'm left with a lot of questions. Um, something I wish I could tell you more about. Um, you know, I mean, I can tell you that my mom was someone who historically took her Saturdays to, you know, work half days at her job, um, run errands for the week, like grocery shopping, you know, just things in town, or she would be resting and relaxing at home from a long work week where she would like to, you know, invite people over, you know, watch TV, watch a movie, have a meal, um, you know, be with her husband, be with her friends and her children. So it's 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 something that's still kind of haunting my family to this day. Yeah, because you know you talk about where the store is. It's not really close to where she was living at that time. Um, how about your relationship with investigators? And I, I speak to so many families, and, and sometimes that relationship is fantastic. Sometimes it's not great, and sometimes it's just very guarded because investigators are doing their work and there's they have a difficult time releasing information to even family members. So how would you describe uh, the relationship that you've had with investigators so far? Um, it, I, I, I would, I guess I would have to characterize it as fine. Um, you know, so far for me, I've only really been in communication with one investigator consistently throughout the entire time. And that was usually because I, that was something that I prompted. Um, and then, you know, I recently had a, um, an exchange with the sheriff. Um, I had a phone call with him, um, just trying to express some concerns. The phone call, unfortunately, was unpleasant and a bit unprofessional. And I'm still honestly at this point waiting for a response from a formal complaint that I filed after that conversation last week. And what was the, the nature of the, the, the complaint? What, what, what? So part of my complaint was um, during the phone call that I had with the sheriff, uh, Mr. Joey Terrell, um, I was expressing some concerns for um, the way in which communication has occurred during the investigation, which, um, you know, um, I want people to know I'm trying to be very realistic here. And I understand that, you know, you're not always going to be privy to everything, but I was trying to express some of the concerns about the way in which information was being released, um, some leaks of information um, that was being given out to the public um, before the family, um, you know, based on some reporting and some reporters that I've talked to who said that they got it from law enforcement. And I also wanted to address, you know, like what steps have been taken by his office and then if any, and then what steps could be taken. Um, and then I followed it up and just let them know that I did not feel like he was able to empathize with the situation or offer any kind of action. He just denied. Um, and I was hoping for some kind of resolution on that. I got you. I understand your, your, frustration with that i mean you yeah. know i'm in the you know i'm on the journalism side of this the reporting side of it and i sometimes i always presume that the family knows more and um to hear that is kind of disheartening um do you know anything and and this is the other part but the first time I, I heard about what happened to your mom this cryptic message and the venmo transfer that day do you have any better understanding of the context of all of that no, uh, no, sir. I wish I could give you, you know, kind of like you were saying before, it's, it's, it's been a learning process for us. Like that's something that even after two months, like I'm still sitting here questioning, um, you know, and I think like, I'm, I want to know why such a large amount, I want to know who they are still that she was, you know, she, she referred to someone as who and, or they, excuse me, um, and who they are. Um, and it's just, it's a, it's, it's, it's hard to, you know, still be at this point and still be asking for help and trying to get that kind of basic information that I thought at this point, you know, they, there would be something a little bit more that uh, could be shared. Absolutely. I just want to bring Bobby Chacon back into the conversation, Jeffrey. Bobby's a former FBI special agent um, has dealt with so many cases and in investigation. And Bobby, if you could just, I, I guess, 
explain to the folks at home, um, Jeffrey, put some context on, on helping a family through the, this, this level of frustration now and a little bit of mistrust that there were potentially some leaks from law enforcement and, and reporters like me getting information. No, I didn't get it, but someone else, like a reporter getting information before a family would get it and, and, and how, to, sure. how to better navigate that relationship. Sure. Uh, first, Vinny, I want to tell Jeffrey that, you know, I, I add on to your condolences. Uh, this is not a this is a tragedy that no family should face. And I've read some of Jeffrey's um, uh, things about his mother, that she, she she sounds much like my mom, looking forward to the holidays, spending them with her family was the, the main thing in her life. And she sounds like this the wonderful person. And, you know, a mother's love is something that should never be taken away. And um, so I want to add uh, my sincere condolences to you and your family. Um, I can tell you that in in situations like this, um, there is an insatiable appetite on the behalf of, um, of uh, the public, of podcasters, of TV shows for information and inside the police department. That should never happen. Um, and, you know, we keep on following the investigative trail. Now, sometimes that means that there's certain information that the family doesn't receive or they receive it in the wrong order where somebody else might receive it first. And those are mistakes that, that come about because they're just not interested, they're not used to this kind of pressure. Yeah. All right. Bobby's going to stay with us. Uh, Jeffrey Bearden's going to stay with us. We're going to take a short break. Um, we'll have much more on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Uh, Debbie Collier's mysterious death still has not been solved. Her son, Jeffrey Bearden, is joining us tonight uh, by phone. Bobby Chacon, FBI special agent, also with us. Jeffrey, what do you think happened? Do you have any um, thoughts about or theories about what, what, what happened here? Um. I, I, you know, I, I think I'm still left feeling like this is a homicide um, based on, you know, the discussions that I've had with law enforcement. Um, but then again, you know, with how long everything has gone on, some of the decisions that have been made, and then some of the recent, you know, engagements and lack of communication, it's, you know, it's hard to know even what is happening or what could have happened at this point. Um, you know, I... I don't, again, want to be a hypocrite and say that my family and I are not prepared for anything at this point, just given how life has gone over the last two months for us. Um, but, you know, I still, it, the what I know and what I know of my mother, it still just doesn't make sense for her to be out there. And so, you know, I think as like someone as a concerned son, I'm still scared that she met, you know, she entered, to, entered into something that she didn't know she was entering into and something bad happened. But, information uh, in pieces. Well, Jeffrey, uh, we appreciate your time tonight. Our, our thoughts are with you and your family and, and. So what do y'all think? And towards the end, I wanted to play that especially because that is what a lot of us have thought. Like why, why such a large amount of Venmo? Why did she go all the way out to Tallulah Falls? Why did she go to that dollar tree why did she go in the woods like just none of it makes sense yeah i have a few thoughts from watching it i hadn't seen that one so that one was new um i see different things both ways i think that if he i find it interesting that he's referring to his family but yet doesn't know about the venmo like you know what i mean like um wouldn't he have more answers if he was talking to his family? No, I think he does. He meant he didn't know what to think about it. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah, he okay. doesn't. He doesn't know the answer is behind why she sent it. Right. Okay. Um, but then I was also thinking if stuff on that other podcast would be true, and he's not on good terms with Amanda and people like that, then. That might also be why, if he was not potentially on good terms to begin with, why he's not getting the same type of information that the husband or Amanda, who was physically there, are getting. That's just devil's advocate, though, of like, you know, w reasons why he may not have the same accessibility to the investigation. Right. But, but then one, the same, I, but a family liaison would be speaking to each member of the close family so that would be the husband and the um the son and the daughter in this case so that one family liaison officer will have the responsibility of talking to the husband amanda mm -hmm. 
and the Sutton Jeffrey, the, 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 you know, so he would still be getting the same information. Okay. Unless, though, like what was being said about him actually having blocked his mom for some reason or something like that, then it might not be as open information if they have reason to believe that he was not close to her either. Oh, yeah. So say her husband, but- Stephen, had um, proof that you know, this son was estranged, they didn't get on, there's no reason for him to really know certain details, for example, then yeah, no, the family liaison wouldn't have to give certain information. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of more just because I know that there were the rumors out there of like, oh, the reason that the I love you text didn't go through is because he had her blocked and they were not on good terms or they weren't speaking at that time, which is all alleged, not in that coming from way. Amanda? What? In that coming from Amanda? <laughs> Um, I don't know if it was the cousin. from Amanda. Um, I know I've actually read it two different places. It was on the podcast, which would be from Amanda, mm-hmm. but I or else too that that was one of the reasons why the text didn't after go they, it, yeah didn't go through was because he had her blocked. But yes, the I think the thing is though, I've blocked my own parent before because it was drama. Like right. You know, and it could be a momentary thing where, like, we're arguing, I'm just going to block you for a week until I feel like the situation's calmed down and we can both apologize. It might be in a situation like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just, I guess I'm just playing devil's advocate of why he may not be getting as much. But the thing is, is if, if your mom died, whether it be unaliving intentionally on her part or someone else's part, I still think you deserve the information. But I, I guess playing devil's advocate of like why may not have the same accessibility just given like a possibility of a background you know what I mean right I hear you I don't think anyone's getting that much information that's what I was about to say I don't think people are getting information at all I you know the detective the not the lead detective but one of the detectives working on the case he and I have been talking And I've reached out to him several times and he's been very open throughout this whole case. And then once that article got quote unquote leaked about them not being involved in it, possibly being an accident or an unalive attempt, Mm -hmm. um, he has not returned my calls. Yeah. So that is telling me that there's a lot going behind the scenes that we have no clue about. And police have their own strategy of doing stuff. I firmly believe that a lot of law enforcement know what they're doing when they have these tactics that the public is like up in arms about and doesn't understand. Yeah. And whatever ends up coming out of it, whether it was her on the living or someone else, it's still going to be one for like textbooks and stuff because it wasn't unaliving it's the most unprobable way of everything going down that it makes it suspicious either way you know what i mean yep so even it's like not the like quote unquote normal way so either way it's gonna be weird right i agree when police are quiet, they're still working, and usually it means they're on top, on to something larger. I completely agree, Jim. Whereas here, as outsiders, we're human and we're impatient, especially when a case is this big and it doesn't make any sense whatsoever, and all these leaks are coming out. I mean, the main reason why this case caught everybody's attention is because law enforcement said that they believe it was personal and deliberate, and they called it, as they believed, a homicide. And they said suicide was out of the question. And... Police might be being quiet, not just, you know, it's not always because they have something. Sometimes the police might be quiet because they have nothing. And they might genuinely be quiet because they have nothing. And they need to sit and be very quiet. And they are trying to keep their ears and eyes very, you know, peeled just for any little speck of whatever. And that's why they're staying quiet, because they are waiting for a slip up. And sometimes that's why cases go cold. I just run out. No, but I also know that the um, 
autopsy, it was either the to toxicology or the autopsy, one of those was delayed and they had expected it to be returned by now. It's a toxicology, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I heard it was yeah. Yes. And they haven't received that information. So that's another reason why they're not going to speak up about anything. They want to have all the reports back, all the reports from the cell phone tower pings, which that could also take long, a long time. Who knows if they have those back or not? Yeah. And based on like, go ahead. No, I was just saying, hey, to sleep, mom. Oh, I was going to say, based on like, Candace said something about like feeling bad for the police department in the comments because it's such a rural area for a high profile case. Mm hmm no matter who is going to be in charge of the investigation because of like the weirdness and the inconsistencies of this case, it's going to, no one has dealt with a case like this. So even if they dealt with unaliving all the time, it's not going to be the same type of investigation that they're used to. So it's going to be more difficult no matter what, whether it's clearly one way or the other. Well, right. But with it being such a high profile and so many eyes are on Habersham, Habersham is very, very small, yes. very small. Um, I don't live very far. I've been to Tallulah Falls several, several times. My husband works in Athens all the time. Um, he travels all along that area and does construction. So it is a a very long way out in the middle of nowhere when there are a ton of other stores that are by Debbie that she would more gravitate towards. And then the type of items that she bought, like I, if it is an un unalive, I don't help me make it make sense then. Yeah. I don't think she was thinking that they were going to find her right away. I've thought that this was either an accident or suicide since the beginning to be completely honest. And hi, by the way. But the car hi. was right on the side of the road. So she would have been found right away anyway. Where the car was, it was so obvious. Right. Well, and Scotty. The car was obvious, but like where her body was, like. It was if not. They, right. And so, and it because was, it was so it, far it, out of her area, like, I think she probably thought like, oh, they'll never check up here. You know. But why buy all those items? Yeah, I mean, there's so much easier. Wait, you could just, um, you know, uh, uh, where's the right word for this? You could unalive yourself with a rope and a tree. Right. Which would have had the perfect opportunity there, which would have been less uh, taxing Brutal. and um, Why try painful. To like, yeah. I, I feel like um, the like the accident side comes in for that part, right? Could she have been stopping there to do... Who knows what? Smoke a cigarette and go to the bathroom, even in the middle of the woods. I like. I don't know. Um, maybe let herself on fire with accidentally, but I don't, I, know. I don't know. It's it's never and really I... made sense to me the fact the fact with the money, right? Because it adds up to dude's court fees. Right. That part makes it shady, right? Right. But if it, if she's sending it to her daughter because her daughter's like, oh, you know well, we need to go pay this court fees. And then she responds with like, well, they're not going to let me go in and pay them. So here's Please, this mom. The, the court fees were um, debunked several times. And I think Sleuthy debunked it too. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Uh, it was, it was debunked. It didn't, because he, he actually did it. He paid off a chunk of it. Um, and there was some other things where it was halved due to stuff he did. So the, it didn't actually add up to his court fees, but it would still make sense as to why they would need that money because they needed money. Right. Um, now, I get what you're saying, Sleuth Mom, because actually Scotty has had the same theory from the beginning. He has thought the same exact thing. I just, I don't, and I know, I mean, I have tried it myself whenever I was younger. My best friend has done it. My uncle has done it. I am no stranger to when you are in that state of mind, you don't think clearly. But the items, I can't get on board with the unalive. Maybe the accident, but again, why would she be in Tallulah Falls? She has a Georgia game. Who was Georgia playing that weekend? 
I need to know. Anyone in chat? Do y'all know? Yeah, Is it Alabama? I can check. What was the date again? That's a great question. Yeah, I do. I will admit in the chat, I do like the theory that Debbie went there to go pay someone off because Amanda owed some money. I, I do like that theory that it was a quiet spot to meet um, someone to hand over some money or transfer money or whatever. I, I do agree. As far as unaliving goes, like people think that it's really unheard of to do that. But I want to tell you, like, there was a three-year study done, and in that three-year study, there was 32 self-inflicted deaths by fire. And so it's really not that unheard of. Um, would oh, it be probably the most painful I'm not, and torturous I'm not gonna, way to do I'm, it? Absolutely. I'm not going to argue against that on you. There's a place nearby me, and it's um, it's a gorge. And there was a gentleman who poured... Um, who poured petrol on himself and lit himself a light in his car. So I, I, I yeah. know that it happens. Um, and it's been right next to me, you know, it's, it's happened in my town, but and honestly, it's... even the tarp, she may have been wanting to close the fire in around herself and more smother with the smoke. Does that make sense? Like to make sure she would pass mm -hmm. out to make sure she wouldn't fight against it. Mm -hmm. um, so there are reasons for some of the items in my opinion. My only thing would be is just for women. Do you know, happen to know how many women were in that um, study? Let me look real quick. Okay. Because I know that women tend to use less violent. Right. But it does still happen. It's just, like I said, this whole case, if it does turn out to be an unaliving, is going to be one that does not follow the statistics that are already out there. Right. Like, I, I took a bunch of... Um... Yeah, it was 26 males and six females. Okay. See, I took a bunch of medicine. Yeah. I had to have my stomach pumped. So I I don't know. I feel like again, men are more likely to do that. Yeah. Kind of thing. Uh I I took a bunch of medicine and I, I passed out on a train track. So Yeah. I you know, I think everyone will try different things and people will go to the extremes. Yep. Yeah. I do too. If you're desperate, yeah. But I just feel like in her case, the the easiest thing for her to do in that situation would have been a rape in a tree because of where she was. Right. It just depends on her motivation behind doing it, right? Like what put her in this mindset if this is what happened, right? They could still very well be foul play. Um, it just depends on... You know, was she doing this is is a self torture type of thing? Um, you know, could she have even just went out there to huff the gasoline and accidentally lit it on fire? Like, so you know, then, people huff gasoline all the time. Um, so so then, there's other stuff. What would you? Or was she trying to make it look like a situation, maybe to get money? Maybe she was trying to make it look like a kidnapping situation or uh, maybe she was trying to make it look like she was harmed in some way and it got messed up and she accidentally hurt herself badly. Yeah, and I know in statistically too, women are more likely to think about the aftermath of who's going to be there and who's going to find them in the situation after. And that's why a lot of the times they do it less violently versus just doing it but the thing is like i said statistics i have no idea because this case is just so out there so what do you think about the end of the message why she was telling amanda about the key under the blue flower pot i think that's going to end up being something only amanda can answer I think she ha would have to be the one that knows. And her finding her purse, but Debbie had her purse. Like, I'm very okay. curious about those. Those are the questions, like, I would want to ask Amanda. Like, does she carry more than one purse? And you just got confused because she had just switched her purse. Um, do you not know where the key is? Did she want you to go there to get something? 
was she trying to make it look like a kidnapping scenario? It'd be interesting though too to real to see if there is any money in this too, because she could have potentially wanted to do the unaliving herself. And but if you unalive, there's no money that comes out of it. Exactly. So that could have very easily been the type of thing where she's like, Well crap, I have to make this look like a kidnapping. Like, yeah, like that, or someone else did this. Otherwise, my family not only has to deal with me being gone, but they also have to deal with the fact that I did it and they get nothing from it. That's what I'm saying. Women have that, like, the background sense of, like, what's going to happen after they do it. They think about it. You know what I mean? BC just said, with their life insurance. Right. I don't know. That's a good question, though. Yeah, because if there was, can, you, can like, you get like, can you get money from having some form of trauma being inflicted in the U.S.? So, like, say you sculpt a uh, kidnapping scenario, um, completely sculpt it, and it's the planned well, and all of this, and it looks like you've been kidnapped and dumped somewhere, and then you're later found. Um, is can you claim because in the UK you can claim money for that you can claim money for trauma that's happened no. um so mental trauma there was this lady Sherry Panini Did, have you heard about Sherry Panini yeah no I don't think so okay she a long time ago elect well I don't know if I should say allegedly now she's no she was found guilty yeah she um faked her kidnapping, beating, held hostage, all this stuff. And eventually, I guess she escaped. And it has came out that she completely lied about the whole entire situation. Like, people were even accusing her husband of having something to do with it. Yeah, she claimed to have gone on a job. And then... And got kidnapped. Her job... Could and Debbie, could Debbie have been doing something similar? I don't think so. I don't think. I was going to say the only real way to profit is if you have like a GoFundMe out, or right. if you have. What's that case? Um, the only time that that they like really, really would profit is in her death if she was murdered by somebody, and not even profit. Um, but in most states, if you are a victim of murder, the state does help pay for your funeral. Um, most states like in Colorado, for example, they get $10,000 towards a funeral if they're a victim of a crime. Mm -hmm. Oh, because in the UK, if anything happens, so like if you're involved in something traumatic, you can claim um, a tra um, so it's just like if you're in a car accident um, and you, you can like make an insurance claim against a person with insurance, but if they don't have insurance in the car, then you claim the motor insurance bureau. You get these lawyers to find a pocket of money for you, and it's the same with medical negligence and stuff like that. But you can also get money for emotional trauma due to something like a kidnapping, or say you were in a shop and there's been a stabbing or a shooting. Um, you can actually get money for witnessing something like that because of the mental trauma that it has impacted on you. Yeah. Um, so I, you, can, you can profit greatly be, off of that. That might be possible if they have gotten an attorney or something. Now, Holly yeah. Courtier, I did a video on her a long time ago, like back in 2020. Actually, it was around this time, 2020. And she, have you all heard about her? I vaguely remember the name. Um, she went missing in at Zion National Park for 12 days. And she then alive? No, she did not die. She came back and said like yeah. she had amnesia and all this stuff, but she was right by somewhere, like her campsite was by somewhere like people walked by all the time and nobody reported her seeing her, nothing. Search volunteers, everything could not find her. And she wasn't really dehydrated. It, it was a crazy story. Her family created a GoFundMe account. And everyone was saying it was a hoax. Everyone. She, she was the one who went to the hospital after they found her yep. by her family car. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. 
I would say no, we don't have anything like that, though. Yeah, I would think not. Uh, Unless it, like, somebody created a GoFundMe or something. Yeah, yeah and, like, most victims of crimes would have to pursue a civil lawsuit against the person who perpetrated the crime. Wow, that's crazy. The state or something like that. Um, there's nothing from our government, basically, though, that helps out victims. Mm -mm. I think they, that's they know that not take advantage of it because even if you get in a car accident in the UK and you, you you find it hard to get in a car afterwards and it and you struggle, you can claim money for the trauma. Now you can like get an attorney and like we have to go through a legal process and sue them. Like I've gotten into a car accident. No, not me. My mom got into a car accident and she oh. sued them. Like the insurance company. Yeah, so you can yeah, so you do you can do that. So it's like like first for lawyers or whatever, you can do that. Yeah. But the major pocket um is that the the lawyer group can also make a claim for trauma, which you can get a large pocket of money out. There's people that can claim like five hundred thousand pounds for trauma that they've had against their life because they were in a shop where some there was a robbery. Yeah, no. I don't think our government does that. Yeah, I would, I would say it'd be interesting to see if in the UK that would still apply, though, if someone, like... Faked like their kidnapping or something. Yeah. Yeah, if you, you, know yeah I mean? no, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so if you faked your kidnapping, but the police obviously couldn't prove that it was faked, yeah, you would still get the money. Wow. Yeah, well, so if I... Yeah. For, for example, right now, if I went missing... Um, and nobody could find me, but I later turned up and I was, say, like, I had to go to the hospital, I was dehydrated, I was banged up, there was all this, like, you know, sort of damning evidence that it was a kidnapping, all the police deemed it as a kidnapping, but they couldn't find my kidnapper. But they, you know, they would say, oh, yes, this has been a kidnapping. I would get a lot of money from that. Dang. That's crazy. That doesn't... But I, I would never have to work another day, ever. I would not just claim, I would not just be able to claim the money for uh, the, the you know, sort of the trauma related side of it. I would be signed off of work because of mental trauma. So I wouldn't have to work, which means the government would then pay me a disability fund. And that would pay, well, a lot a month. And then you'd get benefits on top of that. So you'd probably bring home like three grand a month. Yeah, no. Way. And then with the trauma <laughs> payout as well would be thousands. No, we're lucky. You're lucky to even get like disability after the fact. You know what I mean? Wow. Like you would if you were seriously like a, a victim of a crime and like you were injured in the process and everything else. You still have to go to court and fight for disability if you can't work afterwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I have epilepsy and I get a car. There, there, I, I'm literally in a couple of weeks. I, I, I get a brand new car. Um, that, you know, they pay for your tires, they pay for the insurance, they pay for everything, but I can't drive it, my partner has to, um, but they pay for everything. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure that there are programs out there that we could apply for, like, right. just, it's not government paid, like, it's it's these um, non-profit organizations yes. that typically will help out help families out. in situations yep. like that. Yeah, I used to work for a non-profit organization that we helped struggling teens or like during Christmas time, single moms that couldn't afford presents for their kids. Like we go out and buy them their Christmas. We'd get them to write down a Christmas list and we'd go out and buy it and wrap all the presents and drop it off. So like there are probably organizations, especially out on Facebook, that nonprofit that would help victims, but it definitely does not come I guess, I guess essentially it does because they're a nonprofit. They have a 501c, whatever. But I don't know. It's accessible here. Yeah. I think it's mad that if you go through though, anything traumatic, lot. you don't get anything for it, though. We have a lot more people here, though, than like the UK does, right? I mean, the UK is is smaller than Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, so. that's true. Yeah, <laughs> you got to keep that in mind. Like we're basically, you know, 50 separate little countries if we're comparing it in size and people. So uh, that's a big thing, too. And like here, if you have like one bad medical experience from the NHS and you sue the NHS, you can get millions. 
<laughs> like Crazy. a small little bit of you know sort of medical negligence from a free healthcare service it's crazy i will say if the medical people do mess up for something even if it's something small you can get a pretty big payout but like i said it does take a lot of lawyers time and money just to get to that point versus like just getting it you know what i mean mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think there's a there's a huge misconception about the UK as well and the free healthcare and people talk about how great it is and it is great. Um, however, with the standard of the healthcare isn't. Yeah, because it's free. Right. It's not to the standard of what people who pay get. Yeah, yeah. So I actually like, I have a friend who because my daughter, my middle child, she has um, different issues, and I'm in a support group for. For people who have similar things, you know, she has a genetic duplication and stuff like that 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 has her with other stuff. And there, there's a mom that I talk to pretty regular who's in the UK and she gets so frustrated, especially last year. My daughter was getting therapy four times a week, um, physical, uh, speech and and um, occupational therapy four times a week. And her daughter, same age, same conditions, same background. She was getting it once every two months. Um, and so she, she would get so jealous because, you know, because she was in the UK, like it's just not as frequent. They don't get, she was getting taught how to do the therapy at home, but it's not the same. Yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, that side of the, the healthcare system is so crazy. And what somebody was saying about the disability in the UK, yeah, no, I agree. D- claiming disability is really difficult. So I had to go through so many swings and roundabouts just to get to where I am right now. And I still don't get what I should be getting, if that makes sense. So, but the fact that I'm getting what I am getting, I'm, I, <laughs> I'm more than grateful because I know there's a lot of people that aren't even getting what I'm getting when it comes to that side of the disability. Um, but yeah, no, the healthcare... I mean, my son, he is um, partially um, deaf and he he is like he's in a fishbowl and it took us a long time to get what we needed for him. He was having violent ear infections to the point where his one of his ear infections was so bad at the beginning of 2020 that he ended up with an infection in his blood. So that was going into sepsisemia and he had to get rushed to the hospital. And they, they weren't doing anything about it up until that point. He then had to have grommets and a bunch of other different surgeries and situations that had to go on with him. And it just took so long. And he's also got a paracetamol allergy on top. So his temperature can't really be controlled that well. So we have all those issues. And yeah, unfortunately, the healthcare system is really hard. My mum had cancer as well. Um, and she was looking to have to wait months mm. to get treatment. And, and stuff like that um but fortunately she worked for a um a healthcare um company called simply health in the uk and there are they they supply like sort of private healthcare plans and her boss set her up and she ended up being able to go private with her health care and uh they they stuck her on a trial and within six months she uh she kicked cancer's ass yay which she would have been probably years with the nhs in, in, in the loop with that so yeah she got put in a private medical trial which ultimately probably saved her life but yeah so but that's that's the difference between private and you know sort of public health care here right. it's yeah it's pretty nutty and I know you guys probably have it really hard with the amount you have to pay in America I've seen some of the health bills like the amount of money you have to pay just to have a baby mm. <laughs> yeah it's not yeah. something I don't understand how you afford to do it. A lot of people don't. Yeah, it's, America's got got its problems, that's for sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mal, did you check the chat? Did I what? Check the back chat. Oh, no. I'm like over here in Lana Land. I guess. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, it just came out on the face. 
Oh my gosh, I might have to talk about that after I pick up Tristan. I'll be what case is that for? Put it in the back chat. I'm confused. Jackie Carey. So y'all have put in chat. Everyone in chat right oh. now. Put a one if you've heard about Jackie Carey. There's my alarm to go get Tristan. <laughs> put a one if you've heard about Jackie Carey's case. A two if you have not. Wait a second. Your kid's name is Tristan too. Yeah. My son's name is Tristan. Is That's it so really? awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's eleven, gonna be twelve in December. His name's Tristan. You do not hear that a lot. This one's seven. Yeah. Um Legends of the Fall was like one of my yeah. favorite movies. Um that is exactly <laughs> where we got it from. <laughs> exactly where. And you know what's funny? Brittany has a Kindle, which is I have a Kindle. And we both got it from All My Children, the soap opera. It's so funny. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, so it's mixed. Some of y'all have heard about Jackie Carey and some of y'all haven't. So I have a couple of lives on my channel about that. If y'all want to go check it out, um, y'all can check it out. I'll do a live whenever I get home with Tristan. Um, I guess it will just be a real quick live because there's not that much information out, but I'll do like a recap of the case. And are you taking us with you or what? No. Are, are you... oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll leave, I'll leave it here. Um, in just a minute and then I'll just get back on and do a complete different one. Just so this one's about Debbie and then I can have a separate one about just a quick update about Jackie. Yeah, and it was one of the admins that put it in there, so. Okay. Yeah, I'll look at this. I see it, but um, I'll keep looking into it. And I'll also, that way, if some of y'all in chat don't want to watch the lives all the way, it, they're not going to be, this next one is not going to be as detailed as the lives will because there's, information of Kevin, the boyfriend, or not the boyfriend, the friend, I guess, that was with Jackie. Um, there's like protests at his house that I showed on the, those lives. So just, yeah, I'll, I'll briefly go over it when I get back picking up Tristan. Oh, yes. Oh my God. They've got his phone. Yes. Oh, okay. Right. Sorry. I was away for a minute there. I've come back to the, to the world. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> I, was, I remember now shouting about the fact that they needed his phone right okay it's fine yes yes so we'll update y'all on that whenever I get back I'm thinking like um 245 or 245 what the heck am I talking about 345 4 o'clock at the latest okay, okay. all right good and then I have another live coming up tonight talking about AWP and if y'all saw my last community post, y'all know I had to take a step back because it really got to me. And I appreciate oh. everybody's support on that, by the way. But you know um, what? I think it's important that we all say our piece and put it out there. Yes. You know what I mean? And I know oh. that some people are going to be like, you guys are all beating it over the head or, you know, no. whatever. But at the same In time, like a lot of us have suffered. A lot of us have been through mm -hmm. this. And it's important for healing our community for all of us to say our piece. I agree. So I took some time to come to like a better mental place and I'm ready to talk about it. And I want to talk about what Doug said. I know we talked about it on Brittany's channel, but I want to talk about it on mine too. You've and got this Mo. Yeah. And I, I cannot thank y'all enough of the overwhelming support I got on that post because I know a lot of y'all feel me when you say that you were completely triggered and in my situation, I never really came to terms with it. I just buried it deep down inside and pushed it away. And that's how sometimes I deal with traumatic events. And then out of nowhere, they resurfaced, like literally out of nowhere. And that was a huge trigger. So I want to say thank you. And I feel like it deserves to be talked about. I also think because AWP has been in the forefront of like 
everything in the last year with Kylie's case, everything like that, and how we have all grown to love what they do and the people that are behind it to find mm-hmm. something out like not only is something that should be talked about for just in general, because I think it's a topic that does get pushed under the rug too, but also because all of us were so like mentally and emotionally invested in AWP as a thing. You know what I mean? Agreed. So I also think that's a good reason to bring it up because yep. everyone deserves to know the information that's out there. Nothing. I mean, it still does have to go to court, but at the same time, the stuff that's out there now is the stuff that's out there now and it should be talked about. I mean, I agree. yeah, a lot of people have been following in the past year since the Kylie case. Yeah. I have been with AWP since the beginning. Yeah. When they were picking up trash. <laughs> yeah. So I um, I am particularly uh, pissed off, devastated, upset. And I feel, in a strange way, I feel a bit betrayed. Because in the very beginning, I watched what I thought was this really cool dude doing something really wicked. And then, because it's my obsession with the whole diving thing started out with someone called Dale NYD. Um, it's a YouTube channel. Some people might know him. He's a diver, whatever. And it sort of like went on to there. And I, you know, I found, um, yeah. And and it just, yeah. So I was just, I was, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've been on a bit of a trip with it, and I'm just really pissed off mm. that he, it's it, he, it's just ruined a lot of people's lives now. There's a lot of people that are involved with it. Yep, I agree. <laughs> Yeah, I... <laughs> save it for your life tonight. But yeah, I, I'm sure everyone in the chat's going to have their opinion later. Yeah, um, so videos keep are... it clean, guys. Though, be yeah, please respectful. be respectful and keep it clean, please, for the love of God. Yeah. Because I will tell my mods to delete and time out people, block people, whatever it takes. Because I don't want my chat to be filled with that crap. And I'm not above deleting, blocking, and time outing people. Yeah, I just I'm hope just... that. People that are behind everything, that are actually yep. good people, can continue to do the good things that they're gonna. Right. Do. Yeah. There's a lot of people behind the scenes that have done really good with yeah, that exactly. company and with that purpose, and they do not deserve to be uh, be penalized by one person. Exactly. I also have to say, I y'all can disagree. We can disagree. We can agree. Um, I. I don't shame anybody that has a difference of opinions of me. I just, all I ask is it to be respectful. That's yeah, it. Mm-hmm. Without respect. So yes, yes. And that live is already up, like set, already yeah. set, ready to go. So if y'all want to hit that notification bell on that video, hopefully YouTube will notify you when it goes live, but it's at 8.45. I think I think that's what I set it for. Um, Eastern Standard Time. And then I'll be up at 3.45 to 4 in just a minute. Do I keep Blue's Clues? Do you what? I keep hearing Blue's Clues. Sorry, that's my baby in the back. <laughs> I was like, I swear I keep hearing blue talk in the background. I'm not going crazy. Yes. That is awesome. oh. <laughs> I was like, am I going crazy and hearing blue in my head? It's <laughs> goose. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Well, we'll see you tonight, guys. All right. Thanks, guys, for being up. Bye. Yeah, have a good one. You too. Bye, chat. I really appreciate y'all. Bye, chat. Bye, panel. Bye, y'all. I'll see y'all in a minute. Hopefully, y'all come on on Jackie Carey's update. Bye, y'all. Bye.